Well, good morning. It's Saturday the 19th of June 2021. It's, gosh, it's 10 to 9 in the morning. Um, I've been awake for quite a while. It's one of those days where I woke with a stinking headache yet again. And um, it's beginning to lift. I've taken some headache pills, got most of my way through a giant mug of coffee, so I'll be fine. But I've spent some time um, doing some art before my brain was together, sort of. And to start with, I just want to show you the mushrooms from yesterday because I got lost in them yesterday. And this is what I ended up with. Very, very much influenced by Danielle Donaldson, whose book I mentioned yesterday. And, but I think I've, there's my own twist and slant on it. There is gold on some of these. So if you can see any darker spots, they are gold, um, a gold jelly roll, metallic jelly roll pen. And the white, I tried Posca pens. I tried white jelly roll pens and a white uniball pen. And they all worked fine in different ways. And I'm really surprised myself at how nicely I think this has worked out. There's some strange colours in some places, but that's fine. It's all learning. But I'm really quite chuffed with this, even though I may not sound it. So this has inspired me to continue exploring in this kind of way. There's a nice mixture here of both quite controlled watercolour additions and allowing watercolour to do its own thing, which sort of suits me more. And figuring out that adding that light coloured wash across a whole area and then dropping darker colours or darker, um, more saturated amounts of the same colour in is what works for me because it gives me that feeling I've got some control here, but it allows me to explore the magic of watercolour, but I still end up with that kind of tight lines around the edges, that, that clear, definite form that I like. So, last night and this morning, I thought I'd try um, something a bit different. I, oh, I say different, it's not. It's more mushrooms. But here I've used, on some of these, the Zig Clean Colour brush pens with water wash. So these ones down the bottom in particular there and the colour there um, and this green one there which I haven't actually put any white dots on yet and they work but they obviously this is on the Imagine mixed media paper I see obviously it's not obvious to you because I've only just told you but so I was surprised that I got some watercolour style effects on it and it is working out how each paper needs different amounts, <coughs> excuse me, different amounts of water on it for the effects to work out. But some of these others, like um, this one, this one, this one, and this one, I used some watercolour pencils. They're the Caran d'Ache um, Classic Colours, 30 Classic Colour um, Water Soluble Colour Pencils. I've had these for about 20 years, if not more. They accompanied me on my journey hang on, through A-level art, ASA level art and beyond. And I just can't part with them. I've parted with other watercolour pencils I've tried over the years. Do you think I can open them? But the colours are so lovely. They aren't your, they're really bright and vibrant. And they are quite hard. I've got, um, classic colour soft I think they're called soft version of these um, which I may try later on today but they give a much softer colour and again it's working out how to get them to work this one here I'm really chuffed with that peachy pink because these are colours I don't have in the water the the mission gold watercolour palette and I'm, I haven't worked out how to mix them I've got to think through it but this gives me lo lovely colour combinations that I really like, that I can work with and work out how to use going forward. So it's all learning for me. It's all working out the different, different colours, different styles, different things I can do. The water soluble pencils, um, there's a trick to making them mix together smoothly, um, which involves working from light to dark with a barely damp brush again. 
um, but it was a lot of, it was nice to do. The colours are more subtle than perhaps I, I'd normally do, but I do like them, which may be something for me to now explore with watercolour. So that's where I am. That's what I've been doing this morning. I did start this yesterday. Um, so I wanted to see how uh, the, the zig pens and um, the watercolours came to me this morning, uh, as in came into my mind this morning, just to see how they work. So let me pop these out the way them up, pop them out the way, because then after I'd done that, I thought, oh, I do like bugs as well. So I've done a drawing of bugs. This is only little, I think it's eight and a half centimetres by eight and a half centimetres, which is about, I say about, can I find my ruler I used? I bet you I can't. Yes, I can. I can find a ruler that's in inches. So in an inch, in an in, in, in inches, in an in, in inches, this paper is about three and three quarters by three and three quarters. So the, the actual drawing itself is, what, about just a little bit over three inches by three inches. So it's it's small. And I like working small. I, yeah, I draw A4 and so on, but I do have a bit of a thing about working small. And the reason I like to work small is quite simply because, let me rearrange things here a moment because if I put my palette over here, you'll see my arm now as I talk. I like to walk, work small because although I, when it comes to colouring like this and doing other odd things, there, there is, it's always been my tendency to do that, this when I draw. It comes out in all the line art I do. There's lots of these very fine, detailed drawings that I just, with, you know, with lots of detail and intricacies in it. And being able to create a design or a drawing out of lots of tiny little sections or pieces, it just, I don't know, just, I just enjoy doing it. Um, I, think it I think it's also partly because I'm so blooming fussy with what I do. And when it comes to watercolour, it means I can control the wetness of colour. Now, here I am, I'm using watercolours on the imagined paper. I've just realised this. I was going to dig out the, my ink tense pencils and use those for this but I've gone to watercolours, so that's what it's meant to be, perhaps. And see how I can get this to work, perhaps, maybe. I don't know. I'm wittering on. So yeah, so working small, small scale design, small scale art, seems to be what I particularly enjoy doing. I used to do this with my textile art. Um, I used to make jewellery, tiny, tiny jewellery based on felt and wire, beads, um, my homemade my homemade sequins and other embellishments, sometimes with polymer clay and the like. And I would, um, the amount of detail, the tiny stitches I'd use and the tiny beads and embellishments, and you'd end up with this tiny, tiny beautifully jewelled almost sparkly work of art I suppose that you could wear sometimes made them bigger as in um, big enough to wear as a talk which is kind of like a, a collar around the neck it's not a collar it is a piece of jewellery and that harks back to prehistoric times more than anything but really wide and um, I'm gonna have to do this and then drop some more in excuse me for a moment while I think here what I'm doing so loads and loads of detail on 
those. And then there was, I think I had some that were then mounted in the centre of very large frames with the idea of making them appear like they were tiny, tiny little precious gems or jewels or other things. And it really, really, you know, they, and they were precious because they would take me hours to make. You know, the, the talks would take several, you know, two, three hours a day over the space for a couple of weeks to make. And um, you know, it satisfied my inner raven, as I say, rather than magpie. But the sparkly bits were something that was really important to me. So um, I was, you know, but being able to create these tiny, 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 tiny little things is something that has always, I say always, so we need to go back here. Um, it's always something I've done and I don't, well, who knows why, it's just something I really enjoy. It does it for me. So to find that there are other artists like Danielle Donaldson who also like to work on a small scale and create things that are quite interesting in their own way. This is the problem with this paper is we get these, I say problem, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, is this really a problem that I'm getting these dark lines where the watercolour has been pushed out to the edge? And I'm thinking, yes, but also perhaps not. Because I do like that kind of harsh warp edge where it dries as well. Funny, isn't it? But one of the brushes I've used in digital art mimics this and I quite like the effect you get where it, they overlap and you get these dark edges and this whole pattern going on. Um, yeah. But it's, it, it's working out how things can work for me and what I like and experimenting and going with the flow and sometimes I've said this before, is that you experiment and you discover things that you perhaps didn't realise that you liked. And there's lots of advice about how you should work with colour and you start from light and go to dark. And there are times when I've started from dark and gone to light and got better results. And so I've, I think over time I've learned, well, hang on. People are giving me advice on what works for them, what the, you know, um, traditional wisdom is about, wisdom or rules are about how you use colour and mix colour with different mediums and, and so on. And sometimes I think you just have to figure it out for yourself, but how it works for you or how you get the effects you like or the, the finish you like or the results you like. And sometimes by breaking the rules, the accepted rules, as it were, you find out ways that are perhaps unique to you or you get the same effect, but in a different way. And who's to say which is right, more right or more wrong? Not me. More coffee needed. You can always tell. So I say always tell. I was, I've fin half finished the sentence there. You always tell when perhaps I'm not always quite right because I do prefer tea to coffee. That hasn't dried yet. So this one has. That's okay because I work with it and it'll be fine. That's the nice thing about this imagined paper is although it's not watercolour paper per se, 
well, it's not mixed media paper. You can apply quite a bit of water to it, it seems, without it getting damaged and work it. And um, without the without the paper becoming damaged in any way, which is both surprising and not surprising because I do tend towards using mixed media paper for a lot of my work. I like drawing on it as well. I do. It's true. I do. <coughs> Excuse me. The scrumpling you can hear is a piece of um, kitchen towel I've got in my hand so I can adjust the dampness of the brush once I've rinsed it off or picked up more water because I don't want my brush too damp here as you can see what's happened in some places but that's okay because this is drying so Right, so small art, experimenting, working out how things work for you. Um, bugs, yeah, insects. I find them quite charming and cute um, when you draw them. They, they can be interesting in real life, but I'm not a fan of touching them or holding them or anything else in them. Um, I'm happy to look at them, happy to observe them, but please keep them at a distance from me. Too many legs. It's like snakes and, you know, worms and slugs and things have got too few legs. There's no way you'll ever get me to pick up a worm or a slug or anything. No. I'm not quite sure how that looks. I'm looking up on the screen as well, which is where this is helpful because I can see what I've... I've been doing and that I need to leave that to dry for a bit before I go back to add any more colour. Oh, I've got one here. Right, okay. Let's have a look. I've got a little la ladybug here really looking at this now. I should have erased it and moved it over a bit but oh, I think this la little bit ladybug was eager to meet this triangular bug over here. When I say ladybug, lady, you call them ladybugs in America, in Britain we call them ladybirds. But she, um, she's quite keen to meet that triangular one next door, head to head. Or is that because it's a friendly meeting of bugs? Or is it an, a standoff between them? I do not know. Hard to tell really. How, do, how can you tell what uh, bugs or an insect's emotions or moods or intent are? I guess by their pose and attitude but here they're all drawn in a very stylized way and um, from above really. Now that works quite nicely now I know I've got some dark red over here. So let's drop some dark red in around the edges just to Darken that up just a bit. And it's still damp. Because it may spread out, it may not. I may get a line and I'm fine with that for now. To be honest with you. Just uh, learning to work with this paper could lead to interesting results and finishes. I don't know. That'll do for that one. So I'm working around them so that I can do this. So yeah, so insects are quite interesting, I suppose, in their own way. I'm to move my palette just a bit there because it's getting in the way of my arm. And I know they've got an important part to play in 
ecosystems and habitats and of this world. I know that. Doesn't mean I have to have them as pets though. I can remember screaming my head off when I was, oh, I was still in primary school, so I would have been about eight, nine, ten, eleven, something like that. And it's school sports day, and I, I don't do sports. I didn't as a child, and I certainly don't as an adult. Um, oh, perhaps I'll mention why in a moment, but um, no interest, zero interest whatsoever. But it was school sports day, and if you weren't taking part in the sports day, you sat in the field. And I was sat there watching things go on. I might have had a book with me, might have even been drawing, even though, you know, um, you know, sort of like art wasn't at the top of my list. It was just, you know, whatever I was doing because sports really didn't interest me. And, you know, it was a school sports day. We all had to go to the fields, which were down, down opposite what, where na there's now a leisure centre. And um, I was sat there quietly minding my own business in my school clothes, my long socks, white socks we used to wear. And um, I felt this tickling on my leg and I thought it was just a piece of grass. And then I looked down and there was this enormous beetle on me. Dark brown, I could see it's it was shiny and what well, no actually it wasn't shiny, it was dull, but I could see like it's proboscis and you know it's sort of like mouth parts sticking out and things. And it must have been an inch, two inches long. That's how it seemed to me. And I'd never seen such a big insect beetle in my life and I screamed and screamed and I think people thought I was in pain or something awful had happened and um, it was just out of absolute fear for this poor beetle which you know eventually just sort of like crawled off me and disappeared and um, I was, yeah. By the time sort of teachers and other people had come to check on why I was screaming, this beetle had scurried off and disappeared and they, they never saw it or couldn't see it. And so I, um, you know, felt a bit of a fool, but I'm sorry, beetles, yeah, not for me. Having said that, snakes aren't either, but I have got over my worst fears of them. I've actually held a snake many, many years ago. It was a corn snake. And because um, I thought, well, I'll give it a go. Because they're not poisonous. Not to humans, anyway. Um, and um, ew, I didn't like it. They feel weird because they're not warm. You know, the room temperature, the shiny hardness, but I, the, it's not that that I don't like, particularly, you know, it's not that, it's the way they move and the feel of that movement and I just did not enjoy it or like it, I didn't scream or anything, but I said, right, I've done it, I've held this snake long enough, it can go back now, thank you very much. And off it went. I'm still a bit uncomfortable around them, but I don't scream. And I know where my fear of snakes came from. And again, that was when I was quite young. I would have been about six. And at the end of our row of houses, there was another family who were who were very friendly. In fact, the mother, I, I can remember being called to call her my aunt. And the, the, the young lad was my cousin. I don't know if that was true, but that's what that's what I remember us being told. And, um, oh, he chased me with a slow worm. And slow worms are legless, legless lizards. It's not snakes at all. But he chased me with it and 
you know, came up behind me and scared me and then chased me with it. And that was quite traumatising, actually, as I look back. It really, really was. I, you know, I did not enjoy that experience one little bit. And so um, that has stayed with me. Too wet. <sighs> So I'll end up with that white, that dark edge, but that's okay. Meant to be, perhaps. Let's go with it. That'll be fine. And then I do want to drop some darker bits in at the top. And yeah, I am dotting the colour in because this background is practically dry or the under one. And so to get the colour to spread out, I do need to drop it in somehow. OK, I think I want some more blue in there. I'm going to use some of this blue. That'd be nice. Bit more green. I've got a selection of greens and blues here on my palette and I've got so many different ones are mixed up to make this colour. But it it seems to work. They're not turning to mud. Ooh, I missed there completely. That's all right though. I can correct that later on. More bluey green here. Because of that. And I can see how that area Near in the section next door has just dried that little bit too much. Was dried and has become quite pale. Gosh, making the pig's ear here, and I, I am. But it'd be fine. Will be. Um, pick the extra excess wet up, and it'd be fine. So this area here, but that's okay because I've still got some of that for the colour there, so I can. Let's dot this in and disguise it, so it'll be fine. And this one then, just to match it, let's give it that. In fact, this is reminding me of how I painted some autumn leaves donkeys years ago. That painting's still hanging in my hallway, actually. And um, It was layer. It was with watercolor, and I added layer on layer of quite quite saturated color, different colors, in blobs and splotches, so that the underlying color showed through. I'm sure there's a more technical term for blobs and splotches. If there is, I don't know what it is today. Brain not working as it needs to. But layering up all these little dots. So sort of coloured stippling, I suppose, to get the intensity of colour and the change in those colours. Some dark to light. Rather than letting them flow into each other. And I've I'm doing this with this particular bug deliberately because it well, it was not a happy accident in the first areas, but it adds quite an interesting texture, I think. And if you have a look closely, especially at um, you know, the metallic insects that you can get. And there's lots and lots of fantastic close-up photos of, of lots of different beetles and beetles and things. Speetles is a species of beetles. I'm condensing my words. Um, then they, you can see that it's almost like a hammered finish on them in some ways. These little dots, or little, little pits and things there, and I quite like that. Not that I'm trying to make this in any way realistic. It's just I'm using that, I think, 
subconsciously and perhaps serendipitously as how to deal with how things didn't work out for me here. I've often said that no matter what happens, very rarely is there any reason to dispose of a painting or piece of art. There's always something to learn from it. And with me, this means that sometimes it's working with what you've done in order to work out or work out a way to make it work. And of course it's always learning and I like what I've done with the with that green beetle there. I do. Um, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, yeah, I need some more um, down here because this side is a bit lighter, but and over here over here perhaps because this is much much lighter than the other side and of course they you know you can keep adding and adding ad nauseum but I think that will work fine so I'm going to leave the video here for today doesn't mean I'm going to stop working on this um, but I do need some breakfast my head is is easing off and that means my stomach says feed me and um, I hope you've enjoyed the video today, having a look at the mushrooms I completed yesterday, the versions with different media I've tried. Sorry, I'm picking things off my desk. And um, the start of these ones, these insects. I'm going to enjoy this because the Danielle Donaldson book has given me a different idea of how I can work things and work with things. Um, it's, it'll settle down, it'll work itself out, it may be a phase I go to, or it may be something I incorporate, I don't know. But it's all good fun is what I want to say, all interesting. And um, if you've enjoyed what you've seen, thumbs up, please. And consider subscribing to the channel. And I hope you return again and come and see what I managed to do with these bugs throughout the day. Um, although I do have some work to do because I've not been well this week and I've, I've got a bit behind with the templates, but I'll get there. Um, I've got three to scan. I'm going, you see, I said I was going to finish. I've got three to scan in and to draw digitally because I did, I did sketch them with pencil. Um, and I want to draw them digitally for some reason, even though I've said, oh no, I'm going to do them all by pen. Yeah. It, well, things happen, don't they? And, um. I'm allowed to change my mind and um, whatever you do as it's Saturday if you're watching this Saturday enjoy your Saturday enjoy your weekend if you're watching it any other time take care of yourselves enjoy your day find time to be creative and experiment work out what works for you and it may not be in the official books but if it works for you it works for you and with that I'm going to say thank you bye bye